Relativity Space is a five-year-old startup that just closed a $500 million D round of funding. We're going to take a look at their 3D printed rocket engines and hear from CEO Tim Ellis, along with critical employees Karen Kuo, David Lemire, Ryan Quinn, and Drew Hess. We are building the world's first fully 3D printed, robotically assembled rocket launch vehicle. No one else is working on it, and uh, that means we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. After getting a critical seed investment from Mark Cuban, they were able to raise enough money to continue developing. Hi, I'm Tim Ellis, CEO and co-founder of Relativity Space, and I'm excited to give you a quick glimpse of our new headquarters. It's empty now, but in this facility we're going to build the world's first 3D printed rocket, uh, starting production in just a few months. My name is Karen Kuo and I'm the Vice President of People at Relativity Space. We're here in Long Beach, California, building the factory of the future. 3D printing offers a familiar yet unique set of benefits in engine manufacturing. Most notably, interior features can be highly customized in comparison to the limited capabilities of CNC. Intricate AI-generated interior structures can even reduce the weight of the engine, which increases fuel efficiency. Make sure to subscribe to my channel below to see all the ways 3D printing is changing the construction industry. My name is David Lemire. I'm the Director of Structures and Mechanisms here at Relativity Space. What's great and unique about Relativity Space is the fact that we have our own proprietary additive process that really enables us to design a tank that is made from much fewer components. For instance, the dome, the tank walls, the stringers or reinforcements, as well as mounting brackets can all be integrated into a single component. That effectively reduces the number of joints and discontinuities we have on, on the tank, and we have the ability to reduce you know, the risks and uh, areas of concerns. One of the biggest advantages is what we would call here a Y joint. This is where a typical dome would join into a tank wall and we are able to continuously print and separate the joint in one single piece rather than having to take a, a thick sheet of metal, machining it, rolling it, welding it, thermally cooling or expanding it to slide the other one in, again adding another weld for the dome. We do it all in one single piece and that really reduces the amount of waste of material we have as well. Effectively, by removing all subtractive process, all material that we print uh, and add to our tank is, is used in the end, whereas typical manufacturing would waste 80 to 90 percent of, of the material. And you know sometimes it can be recycled, but it's still a pretty difficult and energy consuming process. Here at our new facility, uh, we are building the factory of the future, really starting an additive process from the ground up rather than having to adapt it to existing design components is giving us a really big advantage. It's been uh, really impressive to see how our additive process and, and print cells have enabled us to significantly reduce floor space while allowing for expansion of the launch vehicle size and components. These advancements we've made here at Relativity in technology really enables us to build a multiplanetary future uh, much faster. It is a mission that we all really truly believe in and I'm excited to be a part of. My name is Ryan Quinn. I'm a mechanical engineer on our vehicle structures team. The specifics of my job are that I design and I uh, analyze and eventually build and qualify vehicle structures on, on the Terran 1 launch vehicle. The mission is uh, very unique and powerful. Um, I truly believe in kind of that additive manufacturing is the future of a lot of the way we do structural engineering. And so to be able to work with a company that uh, it's core to their mission was really important to me. Relativity Space has been scaling up quickly. They have come a long way, still pursuing their initial vision. Without further ado, let's hear from Tim Ellis about the origin and vision for the future of Relativity Space. We wanted to be the first company in the world to 3D print an entire rocket and I really felt this was inevitable. Um, you know, it's just myself and, and Jordan Noon, uh, you know, I was 25, I think he was 22, so we were getting, a, getting an early start at building this thing. 
What's amazing is I actually have a photo of a, a Starbucks receipt where we wrote out the original vision of relativity. Um, really, we, we knew building our own 3D printers, uh, which had to be the world's largest 3D printers, was one of the first things that we had to figure out. So we spent the first couple of years really refining that technology. First engine tests, our first igniter tests, our first Stargate prints of full-scale hardware. And man, I'll tell you, some of those early prints look like piles of metal. and pretty crappy, so we really had to figure out how to refine the technology. Uh, th those early days were a lot of hard-won battles, but um, we learned really, really quickly uh, and, and really started to hit an inflection point about three years ago, uh, where we went from 14 people to now, I, I can't believe it, over 260 amazing people on the team. Sending that email to Mark Cuban, I just felt we had absolutely nothing to lose. And I think I've operated that way the last five years of building relativity. Uh, 3D printing is the future. It's an automation technology that is required to build anything off planet at scale. That's another thing that excites me about uh, relativity's mission of going to Mars is you know, we're only the second one in 18 years. We are really wrapping up the engine design for the flight configuration engine and then starting uh, production of those engines this quarter at a rate of about one a week. Um, so really ramping up the engine production rate, also actually building the flight stage structures, so second stage and first stage, both flight vehicles in production now. Uh, and really the, the big milestones that everyone will see is as we get into integrated stage testing. So second stage testing, um, first stage testing, and that's all happening this year. One. Relativity Space calls the printer they use to print their rockets the Stargate printer. It's one of the few I've covered that print in metal. The flagship product for this company is the Terran 1, powered by the Aeon engine. The Terran 1 is the payload rocket being developed by Relativity Space. A dedicated mission can be purchased for a cool $12 million, which can accommodate 1,250 kilogram payload to low Earth orbit or 950 kilograms to a sun-synchronous orbit. The rocket is 115.4 feet tall with a 7.5 foot diameter. The first stage occupies 55.7 of the vertical feet with nine Aeon 1 engines for a total of 228,600 pound force vacuum thrust fueled by liquid natural gas and liquid oxygen. The second stage is smaller, only 37.4 feet tall with a single Aeon vac engine. At this exciting stage of the technology, it's certain many efficiencies and new strategies are being realized on a regular basis. With their recent $500 million round of funding, they will certainly accelerate space travel. Having already partnered with NASA, who knows which space spheroid they'll be printing on next. Hey, I'm Drew Hess. I'm the head of our mission management team. The satellite industry is changing. We're in kind of a historical shift. As the cost of putting things into orbit goes down, the opportunity to use an orbital perspective is open to a larger number of parties. You don't have to be a nation state or a mega corporation in order to have the resources to go um, design and produce your satellite, put it into orbit, and then extract the insights that you're really after for the business and the customers that you're trying to serve. Some of the many ways that satellites help us are to prepare us with early warnings and observe after disasters occur. They also help us to monitor our agriculture uh, in predicting what kind of crop yield we'll have and also monitor soil uh, and moisture content. They also help us to navigate giving us time and spatial references and also to communicate using wireless and broadband. So Relativity's vision from the beginning was to be a software driven hardware company and being able to accommodate all types and sizes of payloads from the largest of the Leo birds like the Iridiums of the world down to the smallest CubeSat constellations. Our technology stack actually is built on 3D printing capability, which gives us um, the flexibility to quickly design and change um, Terran 1's launch capabilities, and also gives us the flexibility to accommodate payloads in unique ways. The insights that satellites give us help improve our life here, and they're one of the many ways that Relativity is helping build humanity's multi-planetary future.